Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, so in this talk, I'll be talking about, uh, uh, okay, so mainly a, a hopping model, which is defined on a honeycomb lattice. And if you, uh, the continuum uh, limit of this model is described by Dirac theory in two plus one dimensions, which has emergent SU8 symmetry, uh, which is very similar to graphene. Um, and then I'll be talking about what different phases can you get if you add perturbation, if you add interactions to this thing. And this result is different from graphene because of the presence of spin orbit coupling. So that's the uh, title of my talk. So this is, uh, th this is going on with, I mean, this has been done with, in collaboration with Ankush, who is a student here, and then Shubro from here, and Vijay from ISC. Um, yeah, so before I go to the um, uh, actual problem, let me just give a brief motivation. So spin orbit coupling is a very important ingredient in realizing uh, novel phases. So this schematic phase diagram uh, nicely shows that. So for small value of spin orbit coupling, uh, so lambda is a spin orbit coupling strength and U is a Coulomb interaction. For small value of spin orbit coupling, you can have conventional band insulator on metals and then large value of U gives you more insulator. But at a large value of lambda and U, uh, you can have, you can realize this novel phases. Um, yeah, so basically uh, that's the brief motivation. With that, I'll move on to a specific problem. So the model that I'm going to talk about is relevant to these materials, uh, zirconium chloride, hafnium chloride, and materials of uh, this chemical composition. So let me first introduce the lattice structure. So I I'll take ZrCl3 as an example. So in this material, the zirconium, all the zirconium atoms are surrounded by six chlorine atoms and which form an octahedral kind of structure. And then the full lattice is made out of edge sharing structure of this octahedra. So each octahedra is stretching with other uh, at the edges. Uh, and if you join this zirconium atoms, they actually form a 2D lattice to, uh, a, 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 with a honeycomb structure. Um, now coming to the energetics, this zirconium exists as a three plus, in a three plus state, and it has a unpaired electron in outermost D orbital. So with spin degrees of freedom, this outermost electron has 10 degrees of freedom. Now, in present, because of the presence of this octahedral field, this degeneracy of this 10 states breaks into 4 plus 6. And then uh, the spin orbit coupling further breaks it into 2 plus 4. And it turns out that the four states are the lowest of lowest energy. And um, it, it, they transform as a j equals to 3 half state under lattice transformation. So in this problem, the crystal field is the crystal field and spin orbit coupling at the uh, highest energy scales, highest energy scales. Okay. Um, so basically, now if you want to talk about the low energy physics of the system, uh, you can just constrain yourself to these four orbitals. So at each side, I have j equals to three of orbitals in, instead of j equals to half, which comes because of uh, spin orbit coupling. Uh, so keeping this in mind, uh, uh, people have written, so in this paper, uh, the authors have written a minimal model, uh, minimal hopping model for this uh, compound. Um, so here, psi is a four component annihilation operator, which corresponds to the four states of the j equals to three half. And U is a four cross four matrix, and you have some nearest neighbor hopping. And U is some on-site Coulomb interaction term. And this people, the, the, the authors showed that this minimal Hamiltonian has a global ACU for symmetry. So in general, if you write a Hamiltonian uh, with electrons, spin up electrons, you have a ACU2 symmetry, which is the spin rotation symmetry. But in this case, there is spin orbit coupling in the system. It's, uh, the spin rotation is gone, but still uh, the, you have an emergent ACU4. Um, yeah. uh, so basically, if you now draw a band structure for, so keeping U equals to zero, if you draw a band structure for this part of the Hamiltonian, the free part, uh, the non interactive part, you get a band structure like this, where there are four bands, and each band is fourfold degenerate, which reflects the SU4 symmetry present in the system. And since this is a D1 system, I mean, uh, so you can count the only the lower uh, band will be filled in this case. So the Fermi surface are just two points, and near this Fermi surface, the dispersion is linear. So, so the if, if you want to write a low energy theory, you can write a Dirac theory like this with linear dispersion which is very similar to graphene, but uh, I'll show what are the differences are compared to graphene. And uh, this Dirac theory has a, emergent, uh, has a global SU8 symmetry. So basically uh, this SU4 is a subgroup of this SU8. So when you go from lattice to continuum, naturally you increase uh, 
the symmetry that you have in the system, that's uh, the emergent IR symmetry. So in this case, the um, internal symmetry of this continuum theory is SU8 along with the lattice symmetries. Um, now the next question is what happens? So, so this is with U equals to zero. Now, if I put non-zero U or any other interactions, what happens? What kind of difference phases can I get? Um, it's not changing. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so basically if I add interaction terms like this, uh, what kind of difference phases can I get? And then, then this interaction can appear from, let's say, some Coulomb interactions. Um, so first, one thing that you can say, if the interaction strength is very small, um, then you can show that this, th this term is actually irrelevant at the uh, Gaussian fixed point. I mean, so the, the semi-metal phase, the, 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 the semi-metal phase that this describes is basically stable um, in presence of very small interactions. But if you, if you make this strong enough, uh, then you can do a mean field decomposition of this term. Uh, for example, Haber's stratonomic transformation and, and give a expectation value to bilinears of this kind. So, so, so basically what we have done is that we have considered bilinears of this form, chi bar PA chi, uh, where PA are the generators of the SU8 that I talked about, the, inter, the emergent SU8 symmetry. Um, so basically, if you uh, if you have strong interactions, one of the uh, one, uh, one, uh, bilinears of this kind can get expectation values, um, and then uh, we we think about phases in which uh, these bilinears are non-zero. Uh, so basically, treating them as order parameters. Uh, so basically, what I'm going to do is that uh, this 64 bilinears that we have. So basically, a goes from one to 64 because. Uh, you have 63 generators of the SU8, and also I've considered identity matrix. Uh, uh, so basically, this delta A transform under the lattice symmetries. Uh, and then we look at how, uh, so, so yeah, and then they form a 64 dimensional representation of the lattice symmetries. Uh, but the lattice symmetries only has uh, one, two, and three dimensional representations. So basically, the 64 dimension representation that the delta form breaks up into different. Uh, smaller irreps. And uh, okay, then we say that what, what are different phases? So basically, if you have one order parameter or one delta A, and if it goes to another delta A in, in the, uh, by the action of the lattice symmetries, then the both, all the, those deltas differ, um, describe the same phase. Uh, with that understanding, uh, different irreducible representations uh, of the lattice uh, in this 64 dimensional space uh, should describe different phases. Um, uh, if, uh, uh, I mean, at, at max, but if you can uh, connect to different of the, the same array by some SU4, uh, by some internal symmetry, let's say, I mean, those two will correspond to the same phase. So basically, um, basically you find that uh, there are 24 different phases that you can get by condensing the bilinears uh, of, of this kind. Um, yeah. So, 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 so next I'll just uh, show what are the what, are, what kind of phases are this this twenty four uh, phases. Uh, so basically, these twenty four phases can be uh, broadly divided into two categories. One which does, breaks the SU four symmetry. This SU four is the SU four that was present at the lattice level, uh, and the one that is uh, that, that that breaks. Uh, okay, one one phase that doesn't break the SU four symmetry, and one that breaks the symmetry. Um, there are two phases which doesn't break the AC4 symmetry. One is the integer quantum Hall phase, and the other is a charge density wave like phase. And the phases that break AC4 uh, can be of two kinds. One is a density wave kind, and others are quantum Hall types. So these are some non trivial topological phases, which can either be time reversal, even, and odd. Uh, so basically, I like to focus on this thing. So uh, Generally, when you talk about uh, some, um, okay, maybe I'll come to that. And then I can also have density waves, uh, and then uh, density waves can be of both kind, gapless and gap. And then I'll just go to the details, a bit of details of these phases. Uh, so first, starting with this SU4 uh, non-breaking phases or SU4 symmetric phases. Uh, so one of the phases is this integer churn insulator where. Um, I can have the, so basically this phase is a quantum Hall phase where um, if I apply a, a transverse electric field, I, I, I'll, I'll get a I'll get a current. 
Um, and then the other phase, which is SU4 symmetric, is a charge density wave. Uh, we have two minutes left. Okay. Uh, is, is a charge density wave, uh, which is of uh, of uh, which is of stripy kind. And so basically, uh, this blue and red dots represent different kinds of charge densities. For example, let's say plus and minus. Um, and then under lattice symmetries, they go into each other, and then all the three together describe a single. <coughs> Sorry, single phase. Um, uh, yeah, so these are the two uh, SU4 symmetric phases that you can have. And among the SU4 breaking phases, uh, there are eight quantum hall, eight phases, uh, there are five phases uh, which break uh, this, uh, which break SU4 and also uh, which doesn't break time reversal. And these are generalizations of quantum spin hall phase in the graphene, if you. So, so basically, these are generalization of some spin hull phases in the graphene, and this correspond to some spin octopole hull phase. So basically, in these phases, if you look at the boundary, you can have an octopolar current uh, if you have a transverse uh, electric field in the system. And then there are three phases which um, which break time reversal symmetry and also breaks SU4. And uh, these are also some topological phases where one, one of them is uh, the conventional integer quantum hull. And the, another case, you can have a quadrupolar hull phase. So this is uh, this is a new kind of a phase which is uh, which is absent in uh, graphene because you cannot have a quadrupolar moment with spin halves, but with spin three halves you can have a quadrupolar moment. Um, yeah, uh, but th then moving on to the non-topological phases, uh, I have density waves, and I showed that density waves are two kinds. One is gapped, one is gapless. So among the gapped ones, there are two kinds of density. Uh, there are many kinds of density waves. Uh, two of the examples are this stripy density waves, where you have uh, the stripes of red and blue, which uh, represent opposite charges. And you can have also zigzag density waves. Yeah, I'm almost done. Uh, you can have zigzag density waves. And uh, uh, so the, 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 this density waves can be of the different kind of operators. For example, the stripy density wave can have with this uh, octo spin plus octopolar mixture. And the zigzag density wave can appear with this octopolar operator. So there are many other phases of this kind. Uh, and then there are some gapless density waves as well. So basically, if you, let's say, consider this uh, density wave, which basically a different um, charges with different, uh, on the different sublattices, and you give an expectation value of this operator at each side with opposite signs, will generate this kind of a spectrum where some of the modes are gapped and some of the modes are gapless. Uh, so you can have density waves of this kind as well, which have partially gapless spectrum. Um, yeah, so that, so that, that I think uh, covers almost all the phases. And then in summary, I'll just show again this uh, plot that I have, uh, I have uh, different kind of density waves. Some of them are gaps, some of them are gapless. These gapless ones are some new uh, new phases which are uh, particular to this material. And then I can I have also have some time reversal broken uh, quantum hull phase, um, which is not the integer quantum hull, some quadrupolar quantum hull, which is also some new thing which appears because of the j equals to three half moments. Um, yeah, and then uh, one can also. Uh, so, so basically, uh, what I've done is that I have uh, given an expectation value of this kind in presence of interactions to, to destabilize the semi-metal phase. But one can also think of, about, think of uh, this kind of um, operators, uh, which are of chi-chi, uh, which are not, uh, which has a, a non-zero electric charge to destabilize the phase, which will tell you what are the different superconducting phases. And this will be, uh, so Ankush will give a poster on this uh, tomorrow. So, yeah. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, thanks, Basu.